hardback and £1.50 for the soft cover version and can be obtained from booksellers. Captain Selwyn, I should like, if you please, Mr. Soot the Sweep. Well, that lets me out of the game. <laughs> in that case, Captain Selwyn, would you mind moving the screen? I'm so afraid your son is in a draft. Hmm? Dora, please will you give me Mrs. Bung the Brewer's wife? Well done, Sarah. <laughs> Shall I take him, Mama? Edmund, I want Master Bung and Miss Bung, please. It's up to you now, Papa. Papa, please may I have Miss Take the Tailor's daughter. Oh, she's here in my hand. <laughs> Victory! Uh, uh, now, uh, Sarah, if you would oblige me, please, with Mr. Bung. Mr. Tape, Mrs. Tape, and Miss Tape. Master Bung, and Miss Bung. Mr, Mrs and Miss Block the Barber. <laughs> uh, Master Grit and Miss Grits the Grocer. And Dr Dose the Doctor. <laughs> ah, that's the first time in my life you haven't let me win. <laughs> oh, you're too old to be indulged like that. I shall let my grandson win until he is five years old. After that, I shall expect him to beat me fair and square at everything. <laughs> oh, that reminds me. Have you ordered a fire guard for his nursery? Hmm? Yes, Papa. And Bertie has had the wallpaper varnished so it can be washed. And the prettiest muslin curtains are up at the windows. Oh, well. I hope you're not having candles with all that drapery about. No, and no pernicious gas either. Just a good duplex lamp with a heavy base so it can't fall over. Oh, and we've ordered a perambulator for when the baby's strong enough to sit up. Why has nobody made a perambulator the right shape for a baby to lie down in? When a child is old enough to be exposed to the air, he's old enough to sit up. Rubbish. Fresh air on a mild day never did a baby any harm. And another thing, Dora, his back will grow strong without yards of flannel binding to support it. You know, I can't think why babies have to be bandaged up as if they were going to fall apart. I shall leave those decisions to Nanny. Will it be convenient if she moves in with us tomorrow? After the christening, Mama, and takes charge of Humphrey from the month. Of course, dear. Uh, who's Nanny? Our Nanny. Of course. She cared for me, and I wanted to care for my children. I think I'll give Humphrey my clockwork train. I'd like it to stay in the family. Eddie. What shall I do all day up here alone when you're at school? But you'll be downstairs making yourself useful in the morning room. You'll be meeting visitors in the parlour and learning how to be a proper companion to Mama. I wonder if the musical box still works. Used to before you took it to bits. Eddie, I don't feel I know Mama awfully well. Rubbish. And don't suck your brush, you'll be poisoned. I've seen you put lead soldiers in your mouth, and you're still here. I shall give Humphrey my soldiers, too. And the abacus, and the alphabet blocks. That's unless you need them. Thank you kindly. But I can count and say my alphabet. And I think I'm going to cry. Look, you'll ruin your painting. What's wrong? Seeing the toys we'd all but forgotten. Hearing that tune again. And losing Nanny. Why does nobody tell me anything important? Because she makes such a fuss. Exactly. I haven't learned how to behave properly. So she can't go yet. Little girl, box of paints, sucked her brush and joined the saints. <laughs> Look what Nanny found. Now I am going to cry, definitely. Damn and set fire to it. Master Edmund. You'll 
have no butter on your bread for a fortnight. Such language. But you won't be able to punish me, Nanny. And we wish you weren't leaving us. Well, now. You just hold that pretty little outfit up against yourself, young sir. It used to be your best frock when you were five. Oh. And I kept it in case your dear mama should have another little boy. We'll settle your punishment later. Now, Miss Sarah. You dry your eyes, look at your brother, and you tell me why you think he can't get into that pretty summer frock anymore, if you please. He's grown out of it in all directions. <laughs> well then, dearie. Children grow out of everything. Even their nannies, more's the pity. He used to be a real little gentleman before he went into trousers. We're offering nanny 22 pounds a year, all found. Do you think that's sufficient, sir? Well, I have given her 26. But then she did have the trouble of turning three awful children into civilized members of society. Papa, that is unfair. How can you say such things to Bertie? <laughs> I stand corrected. Dora was never an awful child. Apart from the time when she cut her hair off with Nanny's sewing scissors. Oh, yes. But she used to twist it up in curling rags every night to make ringlets. And I could hardly sleep for the pain. Fortunately, Humphrey will not have that to endure. She's rather determined about brimstone and treacle. But I loved her very much. And I'm sure Baby will, too. Your papa is giving her 20 sovereigns as a leaving present. Yes, one for each year she's been with us, and one for luck. And I am giving her a new cap and gown. She never spends her wages. She is saving for her old age and a country cottage where all the children she has ever nursed can go and visit her. Isn't that a charming idea? <laughs> Brimstone and treacle. Will you? Yes, I must make sure that Nanny takes her medicine chest with her. Grown up they may be, but we don't want Edmund and Sarah to start dosing themselves. <laughs> There's something new every day. These corsets are moulded with steam, dear, over beautiful earthenware shapes. Or metal ones. Oh, Nanny, I'm just flesh and it pinches. Mm -hmm. Pride must abide, dear. Can you manage? Yes, thank you, Papa. Uh, I'm going to repaint him tomorrow and renew his mane and tail. Why are you wearing your jacket punishment side out? Oh, I used language, sir. Unbefitting the lips of a young gentleman. What did you say? Was it the servant's bad language or my bad language? Well, it was yours, sir. Oh, well, uh, we mustn't let ourselves get out of hand once Nanny's gone, must we? Six Welsh flannel gowns. Uh, six fine lawn shirts. Six cambric gowns with embroideries. What's all this? Well, the rest of Baby's layout, sir. Four head flannels. You'll be smothered. Two caps and three knitted pairs of shoes. He's not going to wear it all at once, Papa. <laughs> Just one of everything. And a big Russian diaper. Oh. He'll not catch cold at his christening. Oh, don't muffle him up too much. Papa, hmm? I should be wearing proper stays for the christening. Yeah, more than that, I hope. <laughs> and they're too tight, Nanny. We don't want her fainting into a font. <laughs> We have some food. Poor friend Sixpence out, he's got, eh? He's not going home tonight. He'll not be back while there's a baby crying. 